We've been doing a series, uh, God has declared a new season for us, and I want you to be a part of that season, because it's a great season. And it's not the difference between a natural season and a spiritual season, is natural seasons have fixed times. They start and they end. It's like a harvest, starts and ends. But a spiritual season is not like that. Spiritual season doesn't have a fixed time, it's a time that's appointed. when you get your act together and step into it, and that starts the new season. So you can start a new season that's a spiritual season that God has ordained and step in it, and it lasts forever. It's not, not three weeks or three months. It can be forever. Or it could be a year or 40 years. There's times in the book of Judges, there's a 40-year cycle. You see a lot of them. But it was based upon faithfulness or unfaithfulness. So when they were faithful, they had seasons of blessing. When they were unfaithful, unfaithful, there were seasons of struggle. So a spiritual season can be directed by you. And there's certain things that you can do to trigger the season. So you can, you can trigger this new season into your life when God has marked the season and make it happen. And it'd be enduring. Abraham was a guy that did that. Abraham triggered a season through devotion. Got to ask him to sacrifice his son. He takes his son uh, on the mountain. He's ready to strike him. And God says, stop. Now I know your faithfulness. I'm ushering in a new season. In blessing, I bless you. In multiplying, I multiply you. And the gates of hell shall never prevail against you or your descendants. So this season of blessing is forever. What? Are you kidding me? Are you? Are you? Lord, he has to be, he's shaken by that. God does this forever. David was another great leader that, that he builds, um, makes a decision to build God a temple, a house. He says, I'm in a house. I got my allies built me this great house. It's laid out pad. So uh, I'm going to I'm I'm, I'm build God a house. And God sends a prophet back to David and says, I didn't ask you to build me a house, but your heart is for me, and I'm for you. If you're going to build me a house, I'm building you a house. I'm building you a dynasty, David. There will never be. The king will always sit on the throne, a lineage, a legacy of power and authority forever. I mean, just that one decision shift his whole season? I'm just saying there's no, no stopping God today. Right now, this hour, you can make a decision in your heart and live by that decision congruently with your life, changes everything. Your kids, 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 your children's children are blessed because of the decisions you made. Sarah, we looked at her, Abraham's wife, and she ushered in a new season by not allowing Ishmael and, and uh, her son, Isaac to be raised together. Sometimes things that are difficult can usher in a new season. It's a tough decision. Now here's, it, it grieved Abraham, if you weren't here, it grieved Abraham that, that she was against that of uh, them being raised together. And the Lord said to Abraham, let, let the boy go, it's, it's not her, it's me. Um, but what's in your heart is for him to be great, I'm going to make him great. I want to make Ishmael great, and I'm going to make, bring kings through his, through, your, through his life. Be faithful. Well, God was doing something, and, and, and there's times when you don't understand some of the things that are going on, and it's tough, it's hard, you just got to walk with God. I'm not telling you that it's always easy, and you're going to like, every day, it's just like, it's like candy. It's like joy. I'm Jesus. I love Jesus so much, and, and my life is so perfect. It's not, it's not the, that's not Christianity. Christianity, I love Jesus so much. I got some hardship too. Part of the cause. But Sarah understood and she overcame. Joseph was a great leader. Like I told you a little bit about Joseph's ability to see the future. And because he could see the future, dream a dream, he could stand faithful to endure hardships in his present. May God give you a picture of your tomorrow. 
You can get that in the spiritual realm. It's available to you. The Spirit will show you things to come, but you have to set yourself aside and turn off the Facebook or your television program and get into some devoted time to get what God has for you because it doesn't come easy. Well, part of it doesn't, it's not easy because we're emotional and we're human beings. And so we're, we always dream or think things that's best for us. Oh, man, this is good for me. Must be God. Must be God. That's good for me. Oh, and God wants to bless me. Yes, that's good for me. And sometimes it's difficult and it's a challenge and it's not good for you. It's hard, but you can dream a dream. And with the vision that God has given you, you endure hardships and you'll trust the Lord and, and you'll overcome. Moses was like that. Moses, God grabbed Moses when he was just a little boy, saves him from, from being drowned in the Nile, watches over him, protects him, gives him influence, becomes the son of Pharaoh, and then at 40 he murders the Egyptian and, and he's running for his life. 40 years have passed. You can make a mistake. Your mistakes, don't ever think your mistakes stop God. They don't. Your mistakes may create a delay, but God's going to get done what he's going to get done. Because he doesn't live in time like us. It's established. And you may not particularly like some of the processes, but you need to just deal with it. Deal with it. You just say to yourself, hey, be quiet and deal with it. Stop whining. Deal with it. Don't be a baby. Deal with it. I've been in some pain and, and going through some stuff, and I'm constantly telling myself that. Dear Jay would tell me, I was like, I'm telling that old whiny baby. I'm sick of him. Be quiet, Gordon, you whiny baby. And I'm talking to myself, right? But I'm just talking out loud in my room. And Dear it's like she's in there, and she's laughing. But I'm just telling him to shut up. Stop complaining, Gordon. There's going to be time that's just tough for you. Hang in there. Don't quit early. Tell yourself to be quiet. Be quiet, self. <laughs> Moses made a mistake, creates a delay. It builds in his heart fear and lack of confidence. And he can't go back to Egypt now 40 years later. Do you know when he goes back 40 years later, the people don't even know who he is. It's been 40 years. He's 80 years old now. Where have you been for our whole life? Now you come in here going to try to boss us around, tell us you're the deliverer? Hello. So he goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, get out of here, clown. Hey, because this clown came in here asking me to let him go, make it twice as hard. Don't, don't pick up any straw for him and, and don't reduce the quota. Do you know they love Moses so much now? Well, you think leadership is easy? You think everything's just going to be great? It's not, but it's going to be worth it. I can promise you that. I can promise you you'll, you'll stay the course, you'll overcome. And the things God has established for you in outside of time are already coming to pass. I want to talk today a little bit about Ruth. Ruth is one of my favorite characters in the Scripture, a person in the Scripture. Um, Ruth is married to one of Naomi's sons. Naomi, her and her husband leave Israel and they go to Moab. Moab is a, a neighboring a region and they're in a 40-day cycle or 40-year cycle. 40-year cycles where the book of Kings is a whole story, the book of Judges is a whole story of cycles where when they're faithful, they flourish. When they're unfaithful, they struggle. When they're faithful, they flourish. And they're unfaithful, they struggle. And you would think you would just stay faithful, right? But it's a system, a season of cycles because it's 40 years and new leadership comes up. It's hard, before we get on them, it's hard for, for us sometimes to control yourself. Anybody? Uh, I'm not going to eat that. I'm not eating that. I'm, not, well, I'm just a little piece of that. Just a little piece. <laughs> Just a piece. I'm, I'm only half. I'm just going to eat half. I'm just a half of it. 
So they had these cycles of unfaithfulness. And then God would come in and spank them, spank their tail. They're like, oh, God, we're so sorry. Then he, they'd be faithful again, and he would bless them. Right now, they're in a season of unfaithfulness, and famine has hit the land. And um, Naomi and her husband moved to Moab. While in Moab, uh, her husband dies, and... They have two sons. So they, the two sons get married to Orpah and Ruth, and then they both die. So now here's Naomi in Moab. Her husband's gone, and both her sons are gone. You know what? Uh, sometimes when you read the scriptures, you have a tendency to zip right through that. It's, you, you, that's hard. Hey, this is some crocodile tears. This is wondering what's going on. My husband dies and both my, son gets, both my sons get married and they die. Now I'm sitting, oh, it's like, it's, it's tears. But you're going to overcome. You are designed to overcome. And you will overcome. You just can't quit early. Here's what Naomi says in to, to Ruth, or to both of them, in verse 11 of chapter 1, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Why go with me back to, back to Israel? Are there, are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? I don't, I'm not married now. I don't even have any children. Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband tonight, a husband tonight, and should bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having, from having husbands? No. There's no scenario here that this is going to turn out good. Go home. Go back. No, my daughters. For it, is, it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Pause. There are times that you're evaluating what's going on too soon. And when you evaluate too soon, you're going to make a bad evaluation because all the information is not in yet. And God never does it. And I'm always struggling. I never can. Stay the course. Hang in there. So she says, the hand of God is against me. He's really not. He's for her. But he's working something here. Then they lifted up their voices. And wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. And where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. And when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. I love Ruth. I love the commitment and the loyalty to Naomi that she shows, that she goes through this, this death and this hardship and this poverty, and she stands, she stands strong with it. May, may God flood your life with people who are loyal to you, who love you, who are committed to you, who take hurt and stand with you, who are not fickle and defriend you, Every day. Some of you Facebook people will catch that later on. <laughs> the uniqueness in Ruth that you, Ruth doesn't fully understand is in her, but it's in her. So they leave, they leave um, and go back, Moab, and go back to, to Israel. And there's a, there's a custom in Israel, and the custom is that 
when your husband dies and you don't have children to carry on your name, that one of your relatives would step up, marry the uh, widow, and have children with her to, to, to um, promulgate or fulfill your word or your legacy. And so um, they go back. And, but they're poor. They don't have anything. So Ruth is out trying to um, till the ground. And she's, she's part of the harvest, the harvesters. And so she just picks a field. And she goes in, she picks that field, and the favor of God's on her, right? Because she's got a loyal heart, and she loves the Lord. And my God is, whatever your God is, is my God. I'm, working, I'm serving your God. So she, and so God's, she's, she's out pulling, and she, and she gets some favor, and she comes back home, and, and Naomi says, well, where were you? She says, I was at this, in this field, uh, and I was working in this field, and, and there was a guy named Boaz. And she goes, Boaz? Oh, that's part of our family. You, of all the fields you could have gone, you went to Boaz? Oh, that's awesome. It's just God's working. You know how God is? He just kind of works, directs your steps, and makes things happen. He just moves you in the right place, in the right situation. Why are you afraid? Why are you concerned? When you've made a loyal decree and a declaration, my God, I will serve you, faithful to the things of God. Yes, Lord, I will honor. Come on. He, he's with you. You might be in a little bit of a difficult spot, but it won't last. The atmosphere is going to change. You're going to shift it. You're going to find the favor. She's disciplined. She works hard. She's ordered. So it come times pass. So this is a, a full, almost a full year. They're in two different seasons now of harvest. And so Naomi says, we have to do something about you, about making sure you got a good house and, and, and get married and get stable. So she knows that Boaz is a part of the family. And he's wealthy, successful. And so she sends her to lay at his feet. Um, one evening he goes, he sleeps, she slips in, she lays at his feet. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit what that means. Um, she's a faithful woman. In the scriptures, when, when it says about Jesus, God says, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your, what's it say? Footstool. In other words, I'm going to place your enemies under your feet. Joshua, when he's going into battle and he's overcoming and he's defeating these, these kings, he tells his, his lieutenants, come here, get over here. I want you to put your foot on his neck. Right. It was a symbol, a sign of being either completely conquered or completely submitted to so Naomi says to her, you know, change your clothes. Uh, you've been out working in the field and change your clothes, put on a dress and some perfume because um, she couldn't take a shower because showers hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> so so she, she puts her clothes on, puts a little perfume on, and then she goes, she finds where he is. And she lays down, quietly slips in under to his feet. And so when he, when he wakes up in the morning, he sees her. And he goes, now, mind you, this is not like two weeks have passed. They're in a whole new harvest. Almost a year has passed. And he goes, oh, oh, he knows who she is. Oh. And she knows, he knows the custom. And he also knows she could have picked Anybody, any of the other men who are part of their family. But she chose him. And he's, a, he's an older man. And he goes, you, you, oh. you could have chose anybody you chose me. Oh, okay. It's on now. It's on. Right. So now he's got he's to work it now. He's got to work this thing to make sure he's able because he's not, he's not the first in line. 
to redeem this land, marry Ruth, and push forward a legacy. He's, he's waiting for the hand of God. And the guy who's in first says, no, I, I don't, I don't want to do this. So he steps up and he marries Ruth and he has a son named Obed. Obed has a son named Jesse. Jesse has a son. His name is King David. This woman, who was nothing, is now in the legacy of the king. Mm. Jesus, she's in the tribe of Judah. This woman's instrumental in bringing Jesus. She's in the line of Jesus. Hello. When Jesus is looking at his relatives, he's going, hey, Ruth. It's not over. It may be, it may be difficult for you right now, but you're going to change the season. You're going to change the season in your household. You're going to change the season in your family and your children. You're going to alter them, take them to a new place, things you could never do. And it's hard and difficult. Hey, change the season. You're going to shift the season. And God has marked you to do it, and it's going to be fun. A powerful thing. Let me give you a couple more and then we'll close. Uh, Solomon is David's son. Solomon's a great king, but he's a young king and he doesn't really understand everything he needs to do. Uh, David passes the baton to him. And Solomon says to the Lord in 2 Chronicles, verse 8, chapter 1, You have shown great mercy to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established. For you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Watch how they have grown. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? So David, Solomon takes what David gives him and he elevates the atmosphere through wisdom and favor. So the nation becomes a great and powerful nation. But Solomon hits some hardships because he makes bad decisions. And his primary bad decisions, where he completely disregards the things God has told him to do. Let me, let me show you. In Deuteronomy 17, verse 16, here's what the Lord says. You shall not multiply horses for yourself or make the people desire to return to Egypt to, by multiplying horses. For the Lord has said, you shall not return that way again. Neither shall he multiply wives for himself, lest his heart turn away. Nor shall he greatly multiply silver and gold for himself. So he says, don't, don't multiply horses so that your army is too strong. Don't multiply wives because they're going to turn your heart. And don't have so much resource that you lose your commitment to me. Let, let's see how Solomon does. There's only three things he asked him to do. Well, let's look at the first one. Uh, first Kings chapter 10. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold. And all the vessels of the house of the force of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver. For this was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. For the king had merchant ships at sea and with a fleet of Hiram off. Once every three years, the merchant ships would bring gold and silver, ivory, apes, monkeys. So King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Now all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God put in his heart. Each man brought his present articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and mules at a set rate each year. At a set rate, year by year. So this, it wasn't like they bring a gift. It was a set rate. You want to get with Solomon? Here's what it, this would have cost you to do that. So they brought this year by year. And, and so the wealth that Solomon has, check the box, bro. <laughs> Strike one. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. 
he had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities with the king at Jerusalem. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. Hmm. So he, he multiplies the horses, his army. He multiplies wealth so that he has so much resources he's no longer dependent upon God. But, but it, it, at least he's got the female thing right. Let's see. 1 Kings 11. And he had 700 wives, <laughs> princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. He got 1,000 women in the house. He got 1,000 women in the house. That is like drama. <laughs> don't, don't multiply horses, check. Don't multiply silver and gold, check. Do multiply wives, man. Check. He goes crazy. At the end of his life, he's literally lost his way. Listen, the, the hardship you bring is bad decisions. If you, if you could just understand one thing, obedience is mandatory. Obedience. It's not, it's, it's not subjective. It's not when I want obedience. If you're going to walk with God and God do great things through you and for you, obedience, obedience is mandatory. It's mandatory. You can't, you can't take 101 until you finish 100. It's mandatory. It's required. Obedience is required. You can't kind of, you know, but she's fine. I need some money. That's a, that's, a, that's a powerful horse. It's a great military. I want a strong military. God, your military. So he loses his way, and it cost him. But Solomon was a great king that shifted a season. Let me, let me, Esther was a powerful leader, a woman of God that God used to save um, the nation of Israel, Jesus embraces his mission early and is, and is locked in throughout his life and he endures some hardship and he goes through some challenges but his death on the cross is the game changer. He changes the whole atmosphere for everybody forever. Um, the apostles, these are, these are fishermen and tax collectors and, and other men and women. They're not great and powerful in themselves but they're great and powerful. You would look back and say those great and powerful apostles who were fishermen and tax collectors, but they are now, you would say that. You wouldn't say that about them when they were living their life. But they embraced the power of God and the wisdom of God and the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they changed the world. Those men, 120 men and women in an upper, in an upper room, received the Holy Spirit, and they literally come out of that room and change the world. They change the world. What, what can God do through you? Something Something unbelievable because his spirit is in you and his word is in you and his word is forever. It doesn't change. It's established. And he's always has his ear open to your prayer. And when you ask him for something to fulfill the mission God has, he hears you and grants your petition. Come on, you ought to walk with him. He's unstoppable. Yeah, well, this guy didn't want to. It doesn't matter. You don't have to force him. The Lord will flip his heart like he flipped Paul's heart. Do you know Paul is against the things of God, but he thinks he's for God, but he's really against the things of God. Why could he be think he's a for God when he's against them? Because he just doesn't know yet. So God starts going after him, after, after him, 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 after him. And he sits him around him, and he's after him, after him, after him, after him, after him. And he really doesn't care about what the culture says, he's after him, he's after him. Because he's going to change the culture through him. He's going to change the whole culture 
culture through him. The culture that he's fighting to protect, he's after him. He's going to change that culture through him. He's going to shift the culture through him. He's going to take him, he's going to take you and shift the culture through you. The culture that you've adapted, you're going to break that culture. He's going to shift the culture through you. There's other young men and young women that are just, just, just drifting from left to right. But you know what he's going to do? He's going to shift the culture through you. He's going to use you and shift the culture. He's going to break some things that have been in your legacy, that were inherited by you, that are in your spirit. He's going to break the culture through you. He's going to break the culture. And you're strong enough to do it. There's strength inside of you, and you're strong enough to do it. And you're going to do it. You're going to break a new culture. You're going to introduce a new culture, and you're going to break some things that have been against your whole house. And through your friends. And you're going to have to rise up and be strong and mighty in the things of God. Because you being average won't do. And you're not average anyway. You have never been an average dude. Your embrace has never been average. It's always been mighty and great. So step into your shoes and be who you is. Be who you is. This guy who switched sides joins the Lord, and he's so locked in that he writes the Bible. The writings of Paul are Bible. For us, our our deal is not enduring hardships. We live in America. So it's really not hardships. You can look in the Scripture and see trails of hardships, hardships with Jesus, hardships with Moses, hardships with Abraham, hardships, hardships, hardships. Our, our deal is not hardships. You know what our deal is in America? You know what, you know what your, your biggest challenge? It's called faithfulness. Can you be faithful? Can you be faithful? Will you be faithful? Can you do what I ask you to do? It's mandatory. Would you just be faithful? Just be faithful. Well, you can't tell me with rules. Next. I don't believe that. Next. Well, I'm there you. Next. Till he finds one who's faithful. I'll change the world through a guy who's faithful. I'll change the world through a woman who's faithful. Come on. Father, find us faithful. We make a decision to be faithful. And watch what God does. Father, in the name of Jesus. Mark us according to your way. Let your anointing be in your sons and daughters. And mark us as faithful in your sight. Doesn't matter how we see ourselves, but help us to see ourselves as you see us. And we choose to be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful to God, to his way, and to his word, and honor him. He doesn't have to break you down to get your attention. Your ear is ready, and your words are congruent and your habits are righteous. God changes everything through you. You're not too old. You're not too young. You're right where you need to be. Father, establish your desire according to your way and let let nothing stop it and let no enemy delay it and let no perversion Corrupt it. We honor you in this new season for this era in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you haven't given your life to Jesus, that's how it starts. Just build a relationship with Jesus. How do I do that? Just by saying, Jesus. I, I invite you into my life. Teach me your ways. Uh, fill me with your spirit. And start the journey with me. And we'll support that. We'll get some resources in your hands, some books, and uh, Roosevelt will be here or in the prayer room right after service. And uh, we'll put those things together and something special. If you're watching online, send us an email. 
to info at overcomercc.org and, and we'll get resources to you. Uh, Father, we, we pray that every word will be established according to your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our ushers are going to serve us. We want to, in just a second, you know, we've had uh, some, just some bad weather issues that has hit Florida and the Bahamas, and, and uh, we would do want to respond to that if we can. I showed in the first service just some of the, the devastation that's going on in the Bahamas. I'm not sure if you've seen it or not. We're going to partner with um, Steve, Steve and Mary Alessi. They're a great church in Miami. What's the name? Metro Life. Yeah, Metro Life Church. So we're going to partner with those guys, and we're going to give some um, help with water and food and clothing and generators. One of the things is they don't have power. You know, you can imagine with this much water and storms. What happened was um, we prayed literally a couple weeks ago when the storm was raging that it would, it would settle and pass through and not, not hit Florida because we thought it was going to hit Florida. And it, it turned out as, as we prayed that the storm s slowed down and just kind of stopped, but it ended up stopping over the Bahamas and just, and just kind of destroyed the whole doggone island. Uh, could you imagine waking up in the morning and everything is wonderful and beautiful and you're happy and by the time a few days later you're out, you're like this now? You don't even have a house. It's just this beat up. It's just a, a pile of wood and, and you're out. All your stuff is out here. This is the, a classroom. It's just, just devastating for every, everybody. So um, we got partners that are closer to it. So uh, we're going to send some money to them. We've already sent, what, 1500 uh, to get some generators. So if you want to help in that, uh, feel free to do that. Do you have the, the, a picture of the generators that, we, that we're sending? Yes. There's, he took these two, um, there's a couple of them, and got a big one for the whole house. And so what we're doing is we're going to try to start picking houses and people that are connected and start helping them, whatever they need. We're sending a bunch of supplies um, just for the general public, but we also want to do something for individual families as well. And we're not alone. There's a lot of people doing a lot of great stuff. So we'll just do our part. And if you want to participate in that, you can give through Steps of Faith, uh, through the offering. Um, in, the, in the memo, just put, um, what we say, hurricane relief? Is that what we said, first service? Hurricane relief? Anything along th those lines will be fine. Father, we just thank you for uh, all that we're doing and the global missions and pray for Brandon and the team that's, that's in Indonesia right now and doing the work with meeting with pastors who are, who are pastoring Christian churches, which is very difficult in an environment that they will kill you if you, if you uh, name the name of Christ, watch over them, keep them safe and secure, uh, bring them back home safely next week when they come home. Uh, let, let the word know no boundaries. Uh, we speak life and healing to those men and women in Indonesia that they would find Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life. What, what, Brandon, what Brandon told me, he uh, sent me an email uh, yesterday, and he said what's happening right now in Indonesia is uh, clerics, leaders are finding Jesus. Uh, he said, and so it's not like just poor random person here and there. The guys who are lead, who are Muslim, who are clerics, who are leading the work, they're getting Jesus. They're finding Jesus and they're flipping the mosque into a church. And they're using the church now to advance the kingdom, the mosque to advance the kingdom of God. That's the Lord's way. So um, we're, right, we're right in the middle of it. Father, support the work for that as we move it forward. Um, and let your favor be upon your people. In Jesus' name, amen.